And as, I, as somebody asked me not too long ago, they said there was an uh, anniversary of all the presidents been in the book. And um, I said, well, for me, I've, now that I've grown older and I, I, I can look back over my life and, and time and look back at history, I guess I can say I feel sorry that America doesn't seem to learn from its own history. It doesn't have enough of an interest in its own history to learn from the mistakes it's made to correct them. They, as a result, we keep repeating them. And these repeats keep happening. And so therefore, in my lifetime, we came out of the Second World War, and my memory had the first scandal being the McCarthy hearing. And then came <clears throat> the assassination of, of our president, the shock to our system, our belief system, the shock of the quiz shows that were ripping the entire country off for the sake of money. Uh, then came Watergate. Then came Iran-Contra. And then the last several years. So I look at that from a treetop position, and I say, this keeps repeating itself, and it's always the same reason. It's always a greed factor, self-interest, something like that. And what gets threatened is the very staple of our country, the Constitution, the rule of law, and so forth. Well, when this came, I didn't, I, I can say this now, I mean, I was just obsessed with making this film, but, but now I look back and, and I say, well, they say, how do you feel about that? And I say, well, I, I feel very privileged to have stumbled into something that became a national event that I could be somehow a part of. But it was a moment in time. Now, this is going to sound cynical to you guys, and, and I think Bob and Carl can correct it. But to answer your question, I, I said, that was a moment in time. I never dreamed that it would slide so far off the back end after that. I, I had some notion that this would lock into position the value of journalism. And journalism had its own ethic for getting two, two people to go on record before you could print some. And to see it devolve so fast. Uh, shocked me. And then to see the results of it, that suddenly you had gossip passing for fact, you had competition where money was the issue and therefore people were competing just to get the story and forget whether it was true or not or right or not. And I saw that and I thought something has fallen off here. So when you ask the question, I guess that's sort of my answer, the perspective of how valuable journalism is and how valuable good journalism is and how much we need it. Now we're in a whole different world, a whole different condition of the internet creating a whole other uh, change is the only thing that really is going to happen. So we, we're in this big change. My hope <clears throat> is that the Bob and Carls, I don't think this, I, you can make this film today because everything's sort of known already. The candidate you couldn't make today because we know what happens behind the scene. So my hope would be in this new generation coming which I have a very high hopes in for. And the new condition we're living in that we can bring back what Bob and Carl in the Washington Post did at a very key point in our history. You, the, your film is very important, and this story is so important because it shows the importance <coughs> of the fourth estate as another check in the balance of power. So my, my, my question to you, Carl and Bob, are we still, as Bob was talking about, how the landscape of media has changed? Is the fourth estate still in a position to do that, or in as strong a position to do that as it was in 1972 through 1974? I think that what has changed is the landscape of the United States. And that means the people of the country as well as journalism, but particularly the culture itself, that to a terrible extent, the, what Bob Redford is talking about is people in media, in quotes, giving readers, viewers, consumers what they want. And what people want, more people want today, I think, in this culture, instead of real news, instead of the best obtainable version of the truth, instead of traditional standards of, of what's important and what's relevant and what's contextual and what's truthful, too many people want and we supply too much of information that is merely intended to confirm what people already believe. 
the ideologies and prejudices that they already bring to the national debate or to the local debate. So that truth, which really, what, what is reporting, good reporting really about, the best obtainable version of the truth, is devalued in the culture itself. And you can't separate journalism from that because, because we're somewhat reflective of that culture. And at the same time, there are great reporters all over the place in newspapers, even with the stripped condition of, of the print press today, in magazines, on the internet, in new institutions like ProPublica, which just won the Pulitzer Prize. The question in my mind is, if this story, Watergate, broke today, how would people receive it? And my tentative guess would be in a very different way, because what happened in Watergate was the American system worked. The press did its job, the Congress did its job, the judiciary did its job, the Republican Party did its job and insisted that a president of its own party had to leave office. Would that happen today? So okay. I think those are the questions oh, okay. that become uh, relevant. But here's, uh, I think, the, <clears throat> uh, real quickly to, to answer the, the remedy for people in the business of journalism, book writing, whatever you're doing to try to find out what happened, is to just stick to it. Absolutely. I mean, my, my, I, there have just been too many times over the decades uh, where uh, I realized, you know, we just aren't so smart. We, don't, we miss all kinds of things. We, we could have missed what happened in Watergate at 25 points in the story, the evolution of it, the thread of disclosure could have just been cut. You, did, you didn't go see the book, uh, the bookkeeper. I didn't meet Mark Felt uh, in the White House when I was working in the Navy. All kinds of things uh, might have happened. And you get things fixed, and I, I want to tell this quickly this anecdote. Uh, 30 days after Nixon resigned, Ford is president. Some of you may recall, uh, Ford went on television early on a Sunday morning announcing he was giving Nixon a full pardon for Watergate. Now, of course, Ford went on television early on a Sunday morning hoping no one would notice. <laughs> but it was noticed. But not by me. I was asleep in a hotel room in New York, and my colleague here called me and woke me up and said, have you heard? And I said, I haven't heard anything. And Carl, uh, who then and now has the ability to say what occurred with the fewest words <laughs> and the most drama, <laughs> said, the son of a bitch, pardon the son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs>